Hi, this is David. We are back and we are still looking at this Azure Spring Boot application that I've created. It's a simple web service and one of the methods just adds numbers together. Uh, now, in the last video I showed you how to uh, use this MDC, uh, the mapped diagnostic context to log information. And the example I chose was a request key because that's I thought that'd be useful. Every time a request comes in, generate a new key and log that key with every log associated with that request which is pretty cool. That way you can filter out and say, I only want the logs for this request. Um, but it might make more sense, rather than generating that key here in my controller with a new random number, maybe allow the user, the client, to actually pass that with the request. And a good place to pass that is in the header. So let me show you how to do that now. I'll add that information here in the add number method of this controller. Notice there's a couple of parameters here, first number, second number. They both come out of the query string, but I can add more parameters to this. And I'm going to add a new parameter of type HTTP serve let request. All right, I'll just call it request right here. And that request then uh, has information. So for one thing, I can get this, this all, all the information about the HTTP request itself, um, including headers that are passed in from that request. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab out of the headers. I'll have, uh, right down here I have the request. I won't declare it there. I'll declare it up here. String request key equals request dot get header and I'll pass in the name of the header. I can call this whatever I want as long as the client understands it. Uh, I'll proceed with X because that's kind of a convention for custom headers. And I'll call it request-key. How about that? Right here. So if the user has passed a custom header named x-request-key, then I can capture that. If they don't, I want to just double check and say if request key equals null, then I'll generate a random number. So that'll be my fallback right here. All right, let's go ahead and test that. I'm going to put a breakpoint here and go ahead and start debugging this application. And then I'll send a request here. And right now there's no headers being passed. So when I hit that breakpoint, step over it, request key is still null because there was nothing to get and I'll just generate one just like I was before. Not a problem at all. But if I, in my request, I add a key, I have to spell it right. A, let me, so let me copy and paste just to make sure I spell this correctly. Right there, and I'll call it 101. It doesn't really matter. Just uh, I want some random value to put in here. And now when I get it, ta-da, the value is 101. It's being passed. And therefore, I won't need I can skip over this random number generated here. Pretty darned cool. Now that's great, and this, will, this of course will be logged, the 101 will be logged, and I don't, now I'm pushing to the client, I'm, I'm relying on them to always generate a unique value here. If they don't generate that value, that's fine, I'll, I'll create it, or if they generate the same one, they'll just be logging the same thing every single time, and uh, they'll lose the benefit of this unique number in the log. But I'm giving that, them that opportunity here. Now the next step is uh, it might be useful to return to the to the user that's this key. So especially if they didn't generate it, if it's a random number, maybe they want to uh, call up later and say, hey, I had a problem with this request. What's going on with it? We can look in the logs and the, we would say, of course, what, 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 what's the uh, request key? And we can give that request key in the headers of the response. And the way that we do that is that right here, here's where I return the response right here. And what I want to do is there are several overloads for this response entity. If I delete the comma, you can kind of, and then what's a control space, you can see them, it's what they are, status. It's kind of hard to read 
there. But there's one that actually accepts a uh, some response header. So what I want to do is create a response header. I am now going to create the uh, HTTP headers that I'll pass in the response. And I could do that by declaring a new variable of type HTTP headers. I'll call it response headers. And let me instantiate here new HTTP headers right there. Got some squiggly lines which suggests that I maybe am missing an import statement. I am. The one that I want is the Spring Framework one right here. Um, it's all good here, and that's what I'm going to pass in here in this overload headers right there. And that's it. Creating, oh, I'm sorry, that's not it. Uh, I need to actually set something in this here. Response headers dot set. Response headers dot set. And I need, a, this is um, a key value pair, so I want to set uh, I'll use the same name here. Again, I don't have to, I, I can use whatever name I want uh, as long as the client understands what they're looking for, but it's, I think it makes more sense to use exactly the same string in the request and the response since we're really telling the same thing. So let's do that. We'll copy and paste to be sure. Uh, that's the key and then the value will be this request key right here. So now I've got a header with one key value pair in it, and it's going to be passed in the response. Let's go ahead and stop that and run it again. I'll set debug, de debug mode again. I think I might still have my breakpoint set. There it goes. And now click on this. And there, I've set my breakpoint here. This time I said request key is 102. So I should step request key is 102. That's true. So when I step over, it won't, it won't generate a random number. I do some logging. It's all in the logging, just like we just showed in the last video. And now I'm going to generate some custom headers and add one value to that custom header, which is this same request key. X request key should equal 102. So that when I return this response, not only do I get back the number 1 plus 6 equals 7, but in the headers I get X request key and that equals 102. And that'll work. Let me clear this breakpoint out of here. And that'll work each time I do this. If I want to generate a different number here, then um, it passed in 103 here and it returns 103 in the header there as well. And it doesn't even have to be a, a number. It can be anything. I think the important thing for the client would be to always make it unique. So in this video, I've shown you how to capture HTTP header request information and how to return HTTP headers in the response. This is David. Thank you for watching.